All right, Jordan, welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me. It's been a while. It has been. So I was just thinking about running through some surprises that we may you know, find out at Battery Day. Now, we all know about Maxwell and Tesla to be making their own battery cells and things like that. But here's our opportunity to come up with some out there ideas. And the first idea that I have for you that I'd like to get your feedback on is... I keep hearing that Tesla's going to introduce a Maxwell battery and they're going to announce the million mile battery. And a lot of people seem to think that's the same battery. But from what I'm seeing, I'm seeing the million mile battery to be a, a single crystal cathode NCM532, which has cobalt in it. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Elon Musk has mentioned that the new generation of batteries, which I'm associating with Operation Roadrunner, to be cobalt free. So... Could we see multiple different batteries released at Battery Day? I, I think that's the case, and I, and I hope so, because the more that they can broaden their supply chain, the better. Uh, I'd like to see Panasonic continue to expand, along with the Maxwell lines, which will continue to expand, along with the lithium iron phosphate batteries that they'll be uh, getting from China. Mm. And each one of those battery chemistries would have a very specific use case. The Roadrunner for, would be for ultra high end, ultra long range, or even for the next generation of vehicles, which need a, a very cheap battery. Say, for instance, if you're moving to compact vehicles, uh, you need something that's high energy density and low cost to fit in that small package. I've heard a lot of people with expectations that, that they're already building multiple lines at multiple sites. My view is that generally it takes a good year before you drive up the yield rate on a line where it's at a point where it's uh, actually profitable and efficient. So I think Tesla needs to scale this pilot line, even though I think this pilot line will pump out far more batteries than a, a typical full scale line. I think this pilot line needs to get its efficiency up before they start duplicating it, just like they've done with every other manufacturing line that they've introduced in the past. We've seen a drastic improvement between the Model 3 and the Model Y. Even just in the battery pack, Sandy Monroe said the other day that the Model 3, two years ago, had a battery pack at $135 a kilowatt hour, and the Model Y has a battery pack of $110 a kilowatt hour. So they're within $10 of that Roadrunner $100 chemistry um, that everybody's been talking about. So mm -hmm. what else does Roadrunner have? Because bridging that $10 gap shouldn't be a giant leap, but bridging that gap and on top of that, releasing sort of a revolutionary chemistry that's super high energy density, mm -hmm. that's, that's what I'm expecting. That's not what I, that doesn't even include the things I have on my list as sort of moonshots. Yeah. Yeah, I really think to get under the 100 kilowatt hour mark, it's not going to be one thing. It's going to be a combination of like 12 different things that in combination are going to nail that price down and finally get battery prices low enough that you can buy an electric vehicle for a lower cost than a combustion engine vehicle. Yeah. And, and what are your thoughts? Do you have any crazy ideas? Things that are less likely, but that I do expect down the road. But if they, if they release them on battery day, it would be... Uh, really amazing. A high loaded silicon anode. Yeah, it should drive down the cost per kilowatt hour and give you higher energy density. Now, batteries currently have about 5 to 10% silicon in them. Um, it depends on how much they would be able to increase that silicon loading. Everybody's what, talking. What are, your guess, what are your guesses? If you just throw a number out of the air, what can they get the silicon percentage up to? I'm thinking 15 to 20 percent would be okay. significant. I don't see that as likely for another two two years, as I, I've said before. A wild card would be as if they also release a chemistry based on Celion's technology, which the Celion technology would be for a completely different use case. So I think it would be really interesting if they would release both their Roadrunner chemistry and also talk about the plans for the Celion chemistry. Now, this is all assuming that Tesla has actually acquired Celion, and we don't have any verification of that yet. Yep. So it's it's all very much moonshot. And touching back on the high loaded silicon thing, that would be from a supplier like Sila, for instance. It wouldn't be from Celion because Celion's technology is actually very, very different from anything else on the market. 
Moving on to the other ideas I have. Lithium doping is adding a little bit of extra lithium to the battery during the manufacturing process to increase the energy density. What, what happens during the manufacturing process is you cycle the bat battery for the first time. And when that battery is cycled for the first time, it eats up a little bit of lithium in the battery to create a protective coating on the cathode and anode. If you can replace that lithium that's lost, you would see about a 5 to 10% improvement in energy density. So there's another 5 to 10% potential improvement. It, it all adds up. I mean, average yeah. 5 to 10% is super exciting. Here's a yeah. question for you. Everyone's talking about performance. Everyone's talking about cost. Do you see any improvements in safety? There's a product I've come across, and it looks like it's pretty far along in the development process called Soteria. Well, the consortium is called Soteria, and it includes like DuPont, uh, S-Volt, a lot of the major manufacturers and suppliers of battery materials. Soteria's technology allows for a liquid electrolyte battery to be non-flammable. You can puncture it just like you could with a solid state battery. And the way it works is, generally if there's a connection between the cathode and the anode, it creates a bridge. Uh, yeah, it, it, if you run a nail through a battery, it creates a connection between the cathode and anode. And there's a huge amount of energy that flows between those uh, two sides of the battery instantaneously. And the whole thing erupts in flames. It's uh, an ex exponential process. What Soteria does is if there's a connection between the cathode and the anode, it burns up the cathode and anode right around wherever that connection is. So it acts as a fuse and it shorts mm -hmm. out that exponential process before it gets too far along. Hopefully nice. that makes sense. Yeah. It does, and, and this is such a critical component because if you can get the costs down, you'll still have some people saying, oh, but, you know, lithium-ion batteries, there's such a fire risk. And if you can start to eliminate all these objections people have, th these are the things that are needed to really get the mass adoption of EVs, cost, safety, performance, range, all of that in, in combination. So, man, I'd be really curious to see you know, what's announced on battery day in that regard. Absolutely. This is, I've covered a, a little bit of what I'll be covering in my final battery investor day video. This, in my view, will be the best battery day video I, I've done so far because uh, earlier this year, I did a series of videos going quite deep into each different aspect. And I see, I think there was a series of four or five videos that I did. Okay. This video will include everything that we've learned in the past six months as well as a shallow overview of everything i covered in those previous videos so it's not quite as technical but it still covers the exciting points that were made in those videos so after i wrote the script i felt pretty pumped up as well and mm. uh, i'm looking forward to releasing that video a week before battery day nice all right maybe we should just like leave it at that and yeah. i guess I'll be looking forward to seeing your video and then battery day. Sweet. So I hope you guys enjoyed that chat. Just remember, everything that me and Jordan discussed was just our opinions only and not financial advice. And finally, a huge shout out to all the Patreons that make these possible. A huge shout out to Santosh and Bradford Ferguson, who supports both of our channels. So until next time, I'll see you guys soon.